Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome to the stream. Sorry it's a bit late, and we were having, my mom and I were having conversations with each other, because earlier my sister and I, well rather just me, I am, um, the reason I have a sore throat, stop spamming me with your amino crap. Yes, go ahead, I don't really care right now. Internet's being slow as hell. Really? Well, the more you know, I guess. And, uh, I screamed at my sister. Like, I screamed at her so many things. Hey, Compa. Oh, and, uh, tonight we have a fourth person in the bedroom. This is Daisy. She's another dog. She's another dog in my family. We've had her a lot longer than Lucy and Misty. She, um, I think she's about 12 years old, which is, a, that's a lot of dog years. And, yeah, she's she normally just lives over at my grandma's house, but my grandma's in the hospital, and she's really sick. So, um, we're taking care of her. And she's going to be in there for a while. But you can tell that this dog is old. Because, like, her paws are starting to turn white. And she's got a film developing over her eyes. So that means that she's becoming blind. You hear that, Daisy? Floor says you're sweet. Yes, you are. You're my Daisy May. That's actually what I named her. I named, I named my dogs, I named my dogs when, when I was younger. I named her Daisy May, and her sister was called Molly, and, you know, Daisy is actually Lucy's aunt. Um, because Daisy's sister, one of her puppies was, is, uh, Lucy, so, yeah. So, two of the dogs in my room are related. Awesomeness. Oh, I'm gonna go grab my cider. My throat hurts. I'm so lazy today, I couldn't even be bothered to change out of my gym clothes after I had gym class. That was seven hours ago, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Scooter Animations. Oh, Daisy, please don't whine. That's why we brought you over here, because you were whining, and Steph couldn't handle that. Thanks, Scooter. <clears throat> so... Battle of heart and mind, huh? Pretty crazy. Also, I've decided that I don't like fitted sheets. So now I'm using my purple blanket as a sheet, and I'm using my heated blanket that I got for Christmas. And my, my amino followers on the Happy Tree Friends Amino. Oh yeah, I got better weeks ago. I mean, I can still feel some visible scars, especially up here. And I can obviously tell where where they were where where they were removed. But like Honestly, all that matters to me is that I can 
I can chew, eat, and drink things without problems happening. I made a thing of Lammy. I think maybe you might like it, Floor. I don't know why. Probably because it's Lammy. If you can't read it, just tell me. <laughs> the whole reason... <laughs> hey, Miles. The whole reason why I made this is because my friend Cole and I were talking about how if someone is friends with me, then they're just automatically classified as a weirdo. So I just feel like Lammy thinks that if someone is friends with her, then they must be some kind of weirdo themselves. Because I think she feels like only weirdos would understand her. Because, you know, Lammy, I'm like, I'm not saying this to be mean because I actually love being weird, but like, Lammy is a weirdo. Hey, Chloe. She says, fun fact, if you are a friend of mine, then congrats. You're a weirdo just like me. Open your soda pop and celebrate. <clears throat> anyway, what I was saying earlier was my amino followers, that you might, you might have noticed that, like, my, my beach crossover comic uh what about it uh oh yeah <clears throat> my beach cross over comic yeah yeah that's one way in which she's weird she's also weird because she can see spirits and also communicate with them <clears throat> and because she has magic powers she's just weird in so many ways But there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, because being weird is a side effect of being awesome. I had a wallet that said that. <laughs> My name is Emily, E-M-I-L-E-E, -E, but you can call me Emmy, or M, or Emma. People call me a lot of things. Emmy, Emma, Emmy Jean, Emma Jean or Beaner. That was, that's what my mom called me when I was little. Because Jean is actually my middle name. <sighs> People also used to call me Fwemily. In fourth grade, I was known as Encyclopedia Esther because I was really smart and I knew a lot of crazy things that not a whole lot of people knew. So at the end of the year, my fourth grade teacher gave me the title of Encyclopedia Esther. But anyway, about that beach crossover comic, I wasn't originally going to color the pages i was just gonna leave them as sketches because they actually looked really good as sketches um but recently i'm just like hey i'm just gonna color this because like i got nothing better to do so i've been coloring the pages Mm, little boopsy. Is it just me, or does Flippy look really, really handsome in his swim trunks and holding a baby? I don't know. It just makes him seem more like a... He really does look like a dad type when he's like... It just... It just makes him look more like a dad. Yeah, in case you don't know. I'm, I'm sure you guys do know, because, like, why wouldn't you? That's Flippy and Flaky's son from my AU. His name is Floyd. 
And yes, Flickby is also considered his dad because I I have a uh, I have freaking fangirlness inside of me. Flickby, he calls Floyd his little warrior because he believes that Floyd is very strong and he believes that Floyd can overcome tough obstacles just like he he did, just like everyone in their family has. He's not, like, Flippy isn't, he's not as close to him as Flickby is, but he, he does have a certain level of closeness that makes Floyd cling to him. He clings to both of his dads, but emotionally, emotion-wise, he's more connected to his other dad, who he just calls Papa. They, to avoid confusion, because technically he has two dads, Floyd, he calls Flippy dad, and he calls Flickby, he calls him Papa, because, you know. And that is, there. that is Flippy and Flaky's daughter. Her name is Rosie. I know you probably can't tell, but her fur is like a magenta color. And... Flippy is actually very, very close with, with Rosie, even though she's, even though, like, as a teenager, she acts more like, more like Flickby, you know, sassy and all. The sass comes from him. But as a, as a little kid, she has a kind of boyish sweetness to her that, that Flippy has, and that's what ends up making them so close to each other. And they're still close later in later years, but he's also a bit concerned with how she, quote-unquote, defends herself as a teenager. Because she can sometimes get a bit carried away, and she can be a little bit too sassy, and it just feels like she's trying to make someone's life hell, even though she just feels like she's showing people who's boss. Like, she doesn't like when boys flirt at her or call her pet names because it it makes her mad and it makes her feel like hey I'm not just because I'm a girl doesn't mean you can treat me like that <laughs> feminism so she just knocks them on their butts and says do not call me sweetheart anyway next page He can definitely tell that he's like his mom. I'm actually surprised with this page because normally I suck with baby holding poses. But, but what if there are sharks, Daddy? Sharks don't come in this far. The water is too shallow. Jellyfish? The jellyfish try to stay away from us. Eels? Eels are further out. Whirlpools? Whirlpools don't happen in shallow water. Sea monsters? Nope. You see that Flippy just like in like he's trying to get he's trying to get Floyd to come in the water with him. He's even volunteered to hold him while he swims. But Floyd has hydrophobia. Surprise, surprise, and he's just he climbed up a tall palm tree just so he could get away from from his dad so he didn't have so he didn't have to swim but then Floyd's just like okay I'll come down but then he realizes he's up he's up high in a 45 foot tall palm tree and he just remembered that he freaking hates heights oh so many so many ironies in this joke cuz like he's the one who climbed up that tree and in the first place and yet he's afraid of heights, and he just remembered that from looking down, because he realizes it's a 45-foot drop. And, like, how can a six-year-old kid climb up a 45-foot-tall palm tree? There are so many things about this joke that you can pick apart at, and that's what makes it so freaking funny. It's just like, I climbed up this tree 
to get away from my dad. But then I remembered I'm afraid of heights and I'm also six years old. So how was I able to climb up a 45 foot tall palm tree? Of course, they were buried in the bottom of my backpack. So, how are you guys doing? Because me personally, I could be better, but I also could be much, 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 much worse. Um, okay, mahogany. Also, I have two tickets to see Jeff Dunham, the um, ventriloquist comedian. In, like he, He's coming to the town where I live, so I'm going to go see him tomorrow at 5 with my, with my cousin. So that's, uh, that's a fun time, because I actually saw him last time he was here, and I went with my great aunt you know, my grandma's sister, and it was awesome. I got to see that he had a new a new character, uh, an Irish baby character with a giant head called Seamus. One of the jokes that... Um, one of the jokes that baby Seamus used was uh what well, because he's a baby and babies um like a mother a mother breastfeeds her child it's just like um the joke was what does a baby what does a baby call a topless woman and the punchline was a free bar because you know and if you don't understand the joke, you'll get it when you're older. Cuz I think a lot of my a lot of the viewers on my live streams are actually pretty young. No, I don't have a problem with that. The f the funny part is I actually have a hard time getting along with people in my age group even though I've actually gotten a lot better at that. So often I'll hang out with younger or older people because They'll either not understand what I'm talking about so I can just take a breather or they will understand what I'm talking about and I can relate to them. Yes. Yes, we know, Miles. We saw. I don't know if I don't know if I like punk rock. I mean, maybe I've listened to it and liked it and I just don't recognize it as punk rock. I have a hard time recognizing certain genres of music, like, like what, like pop music. Like, how do you recognize something as pop music? Like, what does pop even mean? Like in music, does it mean like popular or something? And uh, I mean, obviously, you can recognize country music because, like. Guitars, harmonicas, all that. Country accent. It's pretty obvious what country music sounds like. And don't give me some whole Shakespearean spiel about how country isn't what it used to be, because I'm not going to understand when you speak like that. Country music is country music. End of discussion. I do like rock music. Because, like, isn't Nickelback a rock band? Because if they are, then I do. I do like rock music. I just like all music in general, I guess. Because, like, 
I love video game soundtracks, too, because video games, honestly, have really good music. Like, the earlier Sonic the Hedgehog games from, like, the 90s and the early 2000s, those had some pretty cool music. Th- those had some pretty cool soundtracks, I mean. I mean, like, especially the music that was done by a band called Crush 40. Because if, if any of you guys have, like, if any of you guys are, like, Sonic fans, then you, you've you probably heard Crush 40. Like, they, like, their song Live and Learn, like, that's such an awesome song. And also, I Am All of Me. Oof, I get goosebumps every time I listen to that song because their vocals mix so well with the, with the scary, badass-sounding guitars and drums but i have a hard time listening to it because like it sends me into a kind of frenzy that i like feeling but at the same time i don't like feeling it It just goes like, I see no hear no evil, black writings on the wall. I see a million faces, and one by one they fall. Black hearted evil or brave hearted hero. I am all, I am all, I am. I love the song. And then the chorus just goes like, Can you see all of me? Walk into my mystery. Stand up inside and hold on for dear life. Do you remember me? Capture you or set you free? I am all. I am all of me. And like, that song fits so well with Shadow's personality. Because like, that's Shadow the Hedgehog's theme song. And, um, like, it fits so well with his personality. Like, the lyrics, like, it really does make you question, like, who or what is he? And, like, what's he meant to be and all that? I mean, I know that Shadow the Hedgehog, like, I heard that the game got bad reviews or something. But it actually, I- I've played it before, and it's actually a, a pretty fun game. I mean, yes, yeah, some of the gameplay is not God's gift to mankind, especially sometimes when you accidentally go too fast and you slip off the level because the gameplay is kind of slippery. It's like you have lotion on the bottom of your feet. Okay. Um, but it's it tells a good story. Like, it really does tell how Shadow's trying to struggle with getting rid of his amnesia, and he's trying to find out who Maria was and what he was made for. So, like, you gotta get all ten different endings before you can unlock the true ending, and that is a tedious process, I will admit. That's not really a good game design. But it is cool... It is cool to see that, like, this happened or that happened or whatever. So it is cool to see, like, multiple different outcomes aside from the true ending. But the fact that you have to play through the game ten different times to get ten different endings is, um, it's kind of tedious. That's concerning. I remember when I killed my first animal. (laughs) I'm joking. I've never killed an animal. I don't think I've ever killed anything. I mean, unless you count, like, flies or household insects or something. Because, like, I remember one time there was this wasp in our kitchen. Because, like, right above our sink we have, like, a window. And um, there was, like, a wasp in the house. And I'm just like backing away like not making a sound and then I came back a little bit and then I slowly grabbed the jet rinser thing like that's attached to sinks no she's not growling she's just whining and Daisy is very old and she shakes and shivers a lot and she really misses my grandma 
I mean, my grandma's going to be in the hospital for a while. And she's getting used to a new environment. Because this my, Daisy hasn't been to my house a lot. I think she's only ever been here one other time. And that was like only one night or something. But no, she's not growling. She's just she's just whining a little. She just she's just homesick and she misses grandma. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I grabbed one of those jet the my the jet rinser that was attached to the sink, you know, the one where like you go um and I just turned on the water. I stepped back and I sprayed that thing until it was floating in the sink dead. And then I ended up uh like pit like somehow I got I think I threw it in the trash or something I might have swiped it down the garbage disposal or something but I don't remember but I do remember that's like other than like insects or something that have gotten like into the house or anything I, I, I've never, I've never killed something. I don't have, I don't have the stomach to kill something or someone. I mean, I might threaten, I mean, I might threaten someone telling them to go to hell or something, but like, that's the, that's the most I've ever done. Like, I do not have the stomach for murder. Even if it is self-defense, I probably wouldn't have the stomach to kill someone. Yeah. Hey, careful, Daisy. Mm. Mm -hmm. You guys have any plans for the weekend, or is it just the same old stuff you do every weekend? Like, uh... oh, Daisy, please don't do that. It makes my knees hurt. Uh, uh, I'm kind of tired right now. Uh. <laughs> You'll also find that Floyd is like his parents in another light, like how he's, he's like both of his parents in the light that he's, He's prone to excessive blushing. Like, sometimes he'll just blush for no reason. Mm. Exams, exams, exams. I mean... We don't have exams in high school. We have tests and finals. And I don't really like taking finals, but I have to take I every year in like high school, I've had to take all of my finals, which whatever <laughs> fine. Hey. Okay, now Misty is growling. Stop. Stop it. I, I want to try to configure my camera so you guys can see the screen of the TV we have downstairs. I'll probably try to do a camera test. Um... But maybe I could live stream myself playing some video games.
because I actually really love playing video games. Because um, video games are, uh, like, I don't know. I've loved video games ever since I was little. And the, my love for video games makes me consider myself a tomboy. Because, you know, I'm not saying that, like, girly girls can't play video games because they're girly girls. But, like, isn't it, like, a stereotypical thing for, like, if a girl is more into video games than she is into makeup, then wouldn't that technically make her a tomboy? Or is that just a stereotype? <laughs> Yeah, you hear that? Floor doesn't want you guys to be growling doggos. We should make a petition in the chat to sign, like, no more growling doggos 2019. If you sign up, we come one step closer to shutting our dogs up. Because honestly, we don't want them to growl anymore. I mean, I get that they're growling for a reason. Like, they hear something suspicious or something out of the ordinary, and they think that it's danger when it's probably not. When it's when it's more often than not, it's not danger. Because, like... I don't know. I mean, somehow I feel like dogs need to growl because, like, if something really is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll have something like that in the future. But right now, I don't have a job. My only source of income is my mother. And my mother, my mother's only, my mom is more concerned. No! Stop! I will. I will I will nom upon the graham crackers of your sanity until there is nothing but delicious crumbs left. Yeah, but anyway, my mom's main concerns right now are the baby she's going to have soon and also teaching me about how the real world works. My mom has other concerns, like, seriously. Like, just if, like just before I started streaming, she was asking me how I plan to manage myself in the real world when I have a job. Because cause I got mad at my sister earlier and screamed at her. I told you that, and that's why my throat's kind of sore. But, uh, she, she, my mom has been saying lately that my temper seems to be getting out of control, and I need to learn how to control my temper better. She says that if I can't even, if she can't even trust me with, with Bella, how does she know that she can trust me to be alone with and someone else's kids or even my new sister that's coming? Just, it's so much more compu, it's so much more complicated than it sounds. Whatever. I don't need to involve you guys in my dramatic life. You're just, you're just here to talk with me and... But it's so hard to keep your feelings in, so I guess it also helps to... It also helps to talk to someone who probably wouldn't get offended by it. Just, like, talk to someone who will understand. Because, like, 
I feel like the next time my sister is driving me crazy and won't stop, I'm just going to call Mikkel and tell her how much of an how much of a brat Bella is being or something. Or I'll just write an angry letter and throw it against the wall or something. And then I'll watch it burn. Yeah, it does. Where'd my other green one go? It went somewhere and I can't find it. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. I found it. Yay. Uh, so tired. So, I don't know, like, I know you follow me on DeviantArt Floor, but I just dumped a whole bunch of pages onto people's notification stacks. Like, my Two Sides of the Same Story comic, I just put, I just posted a whole bunch of pages on DeviantArt. And, uh, we're up to, like, 90-something for Chapter 4. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, instead of doing my English assignment, I decided to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to make it in the real world. It's like, I'm relearning everything I thought I knew. Like, Nothing makes sense anymore. Everything just keeps changing and I don't even understand. Like just this just today on Dr. Phil my mom was watching it and it said how old should your child be when you start to discuss with them about sex and the correct answer you're not going to believe this was birth. And that's so freaking like and my mom was trying to explain to me some bull crap about how oh oh it's not about like it sex isn't always about like how you like like you know the baby making process. It's it's also about like understanding your body and how it works. And she told me that there are 13 year olds and 10 year olds doing that stuff and I'm just like cuz like seriously I'm relearning everything I thought I was taught like when cuz when you're a kid you shouldn't know about that stuff but now they're saying that kids okay I understand teenage pregnancy but like 10 year olds come on yeah we do need more people. I mean, what's what is wrong with the world? Like why why is why are things like you can't just change the rules of something just because you feel like it. Like whatever happened to like uh, or maybe the world's just always been like this and I didn't know that because I'm sheltered. Or because I don't pay attention, because who wants to pay attention to the world when there's just crap going on in it? Like, I don't want to know that kind of stuff. It's just, it baffles me. I never get to use, I don't, I don't use that word very often. Like, baffle, I don't use that word very often. You just, 
I don't understand. I hope so, because, like, seriously, isn't there anything? I'm, I just really hope there's at least one thing that I was taught as a child that doesn't have new rules or hasn't changed. Because I know nothing stays the same and everything eventually changes, but I just really hope that there's at least one thing from when I was a kid that doesn't change. Because, like, I can't keep up with this new stuff. I, I don't get it. Doesn't make sense. Almost done with this. I'm getting really sleepy. Ah! I yawned and it hurt my throat. I feel like I pulled something. But I didn't. Uh. I just want to curl up with this heated blanket and go to sleep, but I'm not going to yet. I want to keep going it to, until at least 11.30. Well, I, I don't mind if it's just you and me. I mean, yeah, I do appreciate and like more people. But, like, I wouldn't mind if it was just you and me because, like, we never get a chance to talk just you and I. It's a den of no mercy, hoshi no kaabi. I was watching Kirby right back at you earlier and I've actually been watching it a lot lately because like when I first found the show I used to binge watch it like crazy and um it's a it's a really good series it's really fun and I mean some of the visuals are not God's gift to man because like it's a it's a mixture it can be a mixture of both CGI and 2D animation, and it sometimes switches between the two. But I actually think at times it it blends quite well. Sometimes, sometimes it was hard for me to tell whether or not it was 3D animation or not, because it kind of blends a little bit. There will be some parts where Kirby is 3D animated. Oh yeah, I didn't, and I, I yeah, I didn't even think of that. I wonder if like it would hurt him if he yawned. Mm, maybe if he opened his mouth too wide. Yeah, I think that's a new thing. It also hurts when he yawns, but only when his mouth opens too wide. So he tries to yawn as little as. He tries to keep his mouth as closed as possible while he yawns, so kind of like, not like, uh. how old do you, how old do you guys think mine is? Cause I think he's like, I think he's in his late teens. Cause like, he obviously lives by himself, but and he he seems to be old enough to have a job and take care of himself but at the same time he also acts kind of like a child i mean they all act like children a lot but they also do grown up things like they have jobs and all and they pay for their food and all that but like that's why i think a, a lot of the tree friends are actually really young Because I know that Happy Tree Friends is not really a show of consistency, so that's why they just, they can bring the characters back anytime, or they can uh, 
do whatever story they want. 21, huh? I think he'd be about Flaky's age in my AU. 18 or possibly 19. I'm leaning more towards 19. There's yellow. Yeah, because he does seem like he'd be young. Like, I don't know. I've tried to come up with ex come up with explanations as to why things are the way they are in the show. I mean, I know the the whole village is cursed thing is um like a typical a typical theory for why the characters keep getting resurrected, and it's often like. I think the characters are actually aware that they keep dying. Because, like, I think there have been instances, like... Remember that scene in Double Whammy Part 2 where Cuddles and Toothy were playing dress-up with Crow Marmot? And Toothy stood up on a stool to grab, like, something from the top shelf. I can't remember what he was trying to grab. But he was trying to grab something from the top shelf. And he almost fell over and impaled his eye on a hook and then cuddles grabbed his grabbed his tail to keep him from keep him from uh, falling forward and getting skewered and when they and when they they both went like phew so i think that's kind of like i think that's kind of like a joke or something or like a possible confirmation that they are aware of the constant death and resurrection. Because, like, I don't know. It just seems like they would become self-aware of it. Or I could just be thinking too much into a, a cartoon that's not meant to have any consistency at all. Kind of reminds me of that joke from the Lego movie that I really don't get. Like when they go to Cloud Cuckoo Land and meet Unikitty and she tells them that there are no rules and she's like, there's no government, no babysitters and all that. And then Wildstyle said, you just said no like a bunch of times and Unikitty says, and there's also no consistency. Oh yeah, cowboy hat. Yeah. Because I couldn't remember if it was Cuddles who dressed in the cowboy uniform. Because, no, no, Cuddles dressed in a cowboy uniform in the episode remains to be seen. Uh, that's why I was so confused. Because, like, I've seen Cuddles dressed as a cowboy before. So I wasn't sure if he was wearing the cowboy hat and Toothy was wearing the space suit. So thanks, Floor. Got it. I think that, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I think Toothy is one of the most underappreciated characters. Because, like, I read something on the wiki about how he just has more of a generic tree friend appearance and he doesn't really have a whole lot to his personality or something so they want to invent on his personality a bit more I really like those little black hair things that he had in the pilot episode um spin fun knowing ya 
And I know he doesn't have those for like any other episodes or like for like the rest of the series, but I really liked them. So I decided, Hey, you know what? I'm going to keep them. It just, uh, gives a bit more character to him. Hi, Mamie. Hi, Umberry girl. Nice to see you. I finished coloring the page. See, like I said, prone to excessive blushing. It's okay, I was late in starting the stream anyway. I love that face. I don't know why. It's just kind of funny to look at. <laughs> Fine, I'll come down. Realization that it's a 45-foot drop. I just remembered. I hate heights! <laughs> Thank you. I actually am a bit uncomfortable with drawing the whole, like, puffed-up cheeks thing, because it kind of looked weird with my art style, but then I realized... Hey, if I take the buck teeth out, it looks okay. Besides, there have been some instances in the show where they make a face similar to that and they're not showing their buck teeth even though their mouths are closed. Thank but thank you. I really appreciate your um compliment. That's three pages so far. It's a damn Oof. Uh. Uh. I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm kind of tired of drawing, so we can just talk if you want. How's your Friday going so far? And you have any plans for the weekend? Because I do. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, so sleepy. God, uh, we got a doge here. This is a doge, and it's my doge. She actually doesn't have a whole lot of teeth anymore. See? Poor, poor Gerda. The poor, poor Gerda doesn't have a whole lot of teethers. Hey guys, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end off the stream early. I'm really tired and I really don't know what else to do right now. Like, I wanted to keep the stream going, but I honestly need to sleep right now. Plus, I'm getting up early to chop up vegetables, so. Alright. I'm gonna go now. Oh, that guy, that guy is my friend from school. He's much more meany in real life. Good night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.